Hello everybody, this is Simon. Welcome to this Unit 6 of Week 3, Build Your End-to-End -end Project. Today, we're going to talk about management of attended and unattended design at the development stage. For that, we will first introduce and define what is a job in the context of SAP Intelligent Robotic Process Automation. We will then see and remind what is the standard execution mode for automation. As a second part, I will show you a specific and attended option available at design time that will let you do uh, asynchronous execution as a new job on a different agent. Finally, we will apply this feature to the shopping cart demo we designed two units ago. Let's now define what is a job. In general, a job is a particular piece of work or task that needs to be done or achieved. In the world of SAP Intelligent Robotic Process Automation, that's a single event in a sequence of actions run by a trigger. Let's, let's now think about an automation. Let's say you have designed an automation that contains several steps. Why couldn't one of those steps be executed as a job. This could really be powerful and we are going to see why in the next part of the presentation. But first, we have to remind what is the standard execution mode for a sub-automation. So let's say you have designed an automation and that you want to reuse it inside another automation. Let's call that automation the sub-automation. When the main automation is, ex is executed, a job will be created. The automation design can be split using sub-automations, but the sub-automation execution will be part of the same execution job as the parent one, like any other steps of the parent automation. So that the sub-automation will be executed synchronously and on the same agent as the parent automation. This is the standard mode. And this is really important to understand that behavior in order to understand the capability of the feature I'm going to present. So let's now talk about that feature, the trigger as a new job option. This is a simple option available on the automation side panel when you have selected your sub-automation step in the automation flow. It will let you trigger the sub-automation as a new job, so that a new job will be created. The parent execution will be split from the child execution, so that the sub-automation will be run uh, asynchronously. And if you leverage that, you could also um, make the sub-automation sub executed by a different agent. This, note that this agent uh, would need to, to be defined on uh, the environment you're working on. So basically on this slide, you can find where this option is available. So when you have selected the automation, the sub-automation step, you can see the checkbox and the label trigger as a new job. If you uh, select, uh, if you check this checkbox, uh, the option will be activated. Please note that this is only available for triggerable uh, automation. That means that uh, when designing your sub-automation, you need to toggle on uh, this triggerable option. You can also update it from the automation's settings available on the upper right part of the automation editor. So now uh, let's, let's talk about the demo. So the, the feature, the trigger as a new job feature I just showed is uh, really useful for a specific use case. When you have redundant repetitive tasks uh, that are independent and you want to parallelize them. This will let you uh, gain some time and the more data you, you have, the more time you will uh, save. 
In the context of the shopping cart demo, uh, we already know that we designed the sub automation that lets you uh, order just one item. We are going to put uh, that trigger as a new job option on that level. So for so that we will parallelize uh, all the, the item purchasing. So let's go to the factory to leverage and test this trigger as a new job option. But first, let's open your shopping cart project into the Cloud Studio in order to do some design updates. If you open your order shopping cart items automation, you can see that the trigger as a new job option is available under all uh, sub automation step. We will more particularly need it for the order one item step. Let's now open the order one item automations to do some modifications. We need to do some updates so that the execution of this sub automation can work correctly with the job execution. Basically, we need to uh, start the application in uh, this sub automation, even if uh, it is already launched, because the agent can take uh, several jobs and in our case with different data. This sub automation will also be in charge of uh, doing the checkout procedure. Let's now go back to the main automation to do uh, some other updates. We can also remove the start application and the checkout steps from this main automation because they are now being done by the sub automation. We can also remove uh, the email notification part because we, won't, we don't want to get polluted during the uh, execution. Let's now uh, check the trigger as a new job option for the order one item step. If you try to test it, you will see that it is not possible. So if you want to check and verify that the design changes we made are correct, you need to uncheck uh, this option. Let's now save uh, the automation and fill the different input parameters we need to test uh, the execution. You will see that uh, the main changes are uh, after uh, each item purchasing. So when an item uh, is being added to the cart, we will now directly proceed uh, to the checkout. So it has been done in order to, to make uh, the order one uh, I step, item step independent from another one so that we can easily parallelize it and distribute it to different agents. So you can see that uh, my agent uh, is executing the workflow. The Excel is being open and uh, closed again. And the execution on the shopping cart catalog is beginning. So you can see that uh, the first item is being added to the cart. And we now directly proceed to the checkout. So you can see that this is the same thing for this second item, but it is uh, being done on a different window. Basically, we do that because when agent can take several jobs and we don't want it to, to break uh, the previous execution. And so we make uh, the, second, the possible second execution on another window. And so the, first, the third and last item here is uh, being added to the cart and the last checkout is being done now. 
And so basically you can see that we, uh, we, succeed, we succeeded in uh, making our uh, order one items job being independent. So we can now leverage the trigger as a new job option uh, for this order one item step. Let's now save the automation. And we now, uh, we are now going to the configuration phase. So for that, on um, the project homepage, we will need to, to click on the generate package button. It will uh, generate a package and we will be able to access it from uh, the packages tab on the factory. So you can look uh, for the package you uh, just uh, generated and we will now uh, create a trigger. So I will choose my environment that is basically composed of my agent that is in attendee mode and two other agents um, that are provided by my colleagues and that are in unattended mode. The trigger I will create is an attendee trigger and it will be distributed to my agent so that I can choose when I want uh, to execute the automation. So let's now create the trigger. It is activated and you can see on the agent that it is there. So I will uh, start the project I, uh, my agent just retrieved and then I will be able to launch uh, the order items automation. So let's launch it by providing the different input parameters. So you will see that uh, my agent will open uh, the Excel will compute it and will close uh, the Excel window. And after that, if we go to the monitoring page and refresh it, you will see that uh, three jobs have been uh, created and all the three jobs are corresponding to the other one item uh, step. So let's now refresh and you can see that uh, parallelly, the other uh, unattended agents are executed the order one item workflow by uh, adding one item to the uh, shopping cart and then proceed to the checkout procedure. So let's now wait for the end of the order one item execution. And if you refresh, refresh the job monitoring page, you can see that uh, the status uh, of your sub automation job will be updated. So we've just seen how to leverage an attended and attended design in order to parallelize subtasks that can be repetitive and independent. That will let you gain some execution time for specific use cases. I hope you learned uh, useful notions during uh, this unit six and also I hope that you will enjoy it. Thank you.